When you're in human resources, or when you have the responsibility of the human resource role, do you have any idea who's watching you? Do you have any idea the government agencies, the, the different um, laws and, and all the different, I know, I can almost hear some of you going, well, yeah, I, I know, but I don't think you do. I, I think you have a good idea that you know they're out there and, and everybody knows and has heard of many of them, but I recently put up a, a training course together and, and it was a, basically an HR 101, but we started with the awareness of just how many different agencies and organizations come in from all the different directions. And what's really interesting is here in the beginning of 2023, we are absolutely being inundated with change from multiple agencies and from multiple directions. And you're supposed to be keeping up with this. And let's be truthful. The average HR person or the, the average person who's in the HR role has got so many other things going on Regulatory compliance is, is just, I had an individual call me the other day and oh, she's one of my best students, absolutely one of my best students, wonderful organization, been working with her for about three years. And I call her a student because when she came into the role, she had never had any HR experience whatsoever, more from the finance background, just an absolute impeccable uh, professional on that discipline. But the company said, oh, well, she can do the HR as well. And she looked at me and she goes, oh, yeah, this is going to take some time. But she started, you know, she became a sponge and she started taking in all this information. And she started going, oh, yeah, I've got a, uh, an employee in California. I've got an employee in New Jersey. I've got an employee in Tennessee. i got an employee here and there. And I, I can do this. And now three years later, she's coming to me and saying, I can't do this. I've got so much just trying to keep my FMLA and my ADA. I can't keep up with all the compliance as it's doing all these changes. I really need more help. So this is dedicated to her and all the rest of you out there who are feeling just a little overwhelmed and realizing, look, I know that I don't know it all, but I want to. So let's go over, and especially some of you who are brand new in HR, this is going to be really good for you because I want to start at the very beginning and I want to kind of walk through all the different government agencies and different things that you need to be aware of on a daily basis. Maybe not all the changes. That's what your labor law attorney's for. That's what your consultant's for. They'll keep you up on that kind of stuff. But you need to be aware that this is, this is, this is who's watching you. The number one, the, the very biggest that we all have heard in many ways is the Department of Labor. Now, the Department of Labor has so many different divisions, and the most commonly discussed and the most commonly influential guidance from the Department of Labor on employment and labor is the Division of Wage and Hour. And remember, Division of Wage and Hour is going to be overseeing the Fair Labor Standard Act and the Family Medical Leave Act as the two most popular. Wage and Hour used to be one of the Oh, gosh, if it wasn't the first, it was the second most common claims against companies were payroll problems, pay mistakes. And they're quick. They're real quick. They'll go back and audit you three years. So understanding wage and hour is actually one of our audits that we do a lot of. Are you paying your people correctly? Exempt, non-exempt. Uh, 1099 W-2. Are you uh, completing payroll records correctly? So keep in mind that you're, one of your top agencies watching you is wage and hour. Again, under Department of Labor, you've got the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Everyone's heard of the EEOC? Of course you have. And in fact, the most recent changes with the EEOC were just published out here in October of 2022, requiring new posting. They oversee Title VII. They oversee the Americans with Disabilities Act. They even oversee genetic testing. And if you have a handbook, 
the EEOC policy is considered one of the core policies of any handbook. And again, remember, the attorneys I work with and, and, and I, we, we all say keep those handbooks simple and concise, but if you're going to have a handbook, that's one agency you want front and center is the EEOC. Then the scariest sometimes for most companies is OSHA. If you're a manufacturer, you do not want OSHA coming and looking over your shoulder. And here at the beginning of 2023, OSHA just put out some new guidance on how they're going to be assigning fines, how they're going to be reviewing incidences by instance. And that's crucial for a, a manufacturing firm, a construction firm. And don't think that if you have a call center, you can escape OSHA because you can't. It is not industry specific. It is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration for a reason. And OSHA oversees the Whistleblower Act. And one of the greatest things that I talk about on this show over and over again is the General Duty Clause, which again is, is, governs all activities for companies. So there's, there's the next, the, the third biggest one. And then how many of you are conscious of the Employee Benefit Security Administration? They oversee COBRA. They oversee the Affordable Care Act. They're also very much involved in the Employee Retirement uh, ERISA. ERISA. That's probably the easiest way for everyone to, to remember. ERISA, Employee Benefits Retirement Plans. You, ERISA is so big and complex that, again, here in the beginning of 2023, we have the Security, excuse me, Secure Act 2.0. We just did two podcasts on that last month. Major changes, 1,000 pages, 90 different changes. And, again, it's not something you wake up in the morning and start thinking about, but they're watching you, and they will let you know if you're doing something wrong. So the Department of Labor... It deserves the respect we all give it. But what about Homeland Security? Homeland Security oversees the I-9, the employment eligibility form required of all employees. Now, your 1099s, no. But employees, W-2, yes. And it has very strict guidance on how it's filled out. It has very strict fines if these are not done correctly, or if they're just not done at all. A year ago, we did our first podcast on a staffing agency that was fined over $2 million. $2 million, and it was a staffing agency who couldn't do their I-9s correctly or didn't have them at all. And again, right here at the beginning of 2023, we're still waiting on the updated I-9, which is supposed to go from three pages to two. It has not been announced. It has not been introduced So that's a change that you've got to keep in the back of your head to know, okay, who's going to tell me when this happens and how am I going to learn how to fill this out correctly? And then the one that people tend to forget is that the IRS is watching you. As a company, yes, they want to look at your books and they want to know you're doing your finances correctly, but don't forget the IRS is very much involved if you're not doing your payroll correctly. They will get very involved if you're not involved or or you're making mistakes with those retirement plans. Because remember, sometimes they're pre-taxed, sometimes they're taxed, sometimes you have to report them on your 5,500. Are you doing that? You also have to be remembered, excuse me, mindful that they are really big in watching you on 1099 versus W-2. So Think about what I just said there. I just said the wage and hour is overseeing whether you're paying 1099 and W-2 correctly, but now you've also got the IRS, which means if you're making a mistake in your payroll practices, you could have two separate government agencies coming in at you at the same time with two separate fines and two separate processes. And then the one that I tend to love talking about, National Labor Relations Board. Now, they're appointed by the president's administration, obviously, but 
they are they are very active right now. They're influencing the changes to severance agreements. They're get, they're involved in influencing the changes with non competes. And if that's not enough, we have the Federal Trade Commission stepping in and wanting to put changes in on non competes. But at the same time, the FTC with their overseen or, or their activity around the Fair Credit Reporting Act has just made major changes to paperwork and documentation required for background checks. So if your broker or whoever's helping you with your background checks isn't giving you documentation on how to properly discuss adverse action, how the information is maintained and obtained, then you could be out of compliance there. So what have we discussed? Department of Labor, Homeland Security, the IRS, National Labor Relations Board, Federal Trade Commission, and what I haven't discussed at all are the state laws. And I, it would be virtually almost impossible to discuss all the different state laws because they're moving and changing all the time. I cannot sit down in a week and not find another change in a particular state. And, and the sad part is if you've got remote workers, remember we've talked about this a number of times, your remote workers, they work within, within the, the laws or you have to employ them within the laws of the state of residence, not where your corporate office is, not where the branch office is, but where they reside. This is a lot, and I completely understand all of this, but this is why I put a lot of emphasis on your ability to identify someone that will partner with you. If you've been watching and listening to the show, you've heard me say for years now, surround yourself with people who are better, who have been doing this, who know compliance and regulatory. There are people watching you. And if your employees sense that you're not doing it correctly, or if they're fearful you're not doing this stuff correctly, they will go to these agencies for help. So come to us for help, because that's what we're here for. I hope you enjoyed that, because we're the human resource. <laughs>